here from marty music but i am so thrilled to be uh doing a live stream right now for gibson uh really appreciate them inviting me on to uh to go back to the basics uh we're on uh we're on uh instagram on gibson what's up everybody uh we're on youtube and facebook for gibson as well so i just want to say hey to everybody uh this is back to basics uh i have a good topic you know I'm, i've been you know, when it comes to the basics, like the fundamentals of guitar, they're always going to help you. So if you're a more um, like intermediate guitar player, uh, this could be a good tip for you to, to teach somebody. Um, let me close my uh, email here, of course. Oops. Anyway, um, this is about switching chords smoothly um, and the best way to do it. So what I'm saying is if you're an intermediate player, you can use some of these things that that um, have helped me as a guitar teacher, or if you're more of a beginner, um, I think these are are really good tips to help you. Now, another thing about uh, this live stream is I'm jamming on a brand new guitar, new guitar day, new guitar day. So this uh, is, as you can see, a Gibson SG, and it's a 61 standard stop bar. So it's got the, you know, not the, not the wiggle, but the stop bar, and it's based on the 60s, so it's got a little bit of that uh, tapered neck. Um, it's got the 61 pickups in it. I just got it, so thank you again to, to Gibson, um, but it's just been, oh, it plays so sweet. Um, the other SG, some of you that have watched me in the past, uh, is from the, like, around 2013 to 2015 um, that I had bought used, so I didn't know much about it. Um, but I got to say this brand new one actually uh, plays and sounds uh, like a dream. So now if you're watching on Facebook and YouTube, it's just the mic from my laptop. But anyway, the guitar plays fantastic. So 61 standard stop bar. Okay, so let's talk about switching chords quickly. The topic of this live stream, switching the basic chords and tips to get that down. Um, now, it doesn't mean I'm not taking other questions, so feel free. Uh, I also actually have uh, my good friend Brian here who's watching the Instagram comments, um, so feel free. And then we've also got Gibson uh, watching and helping, you know, moderate. So if you have any important, any questions at all, um, you know, we're all watching. And also this video will be archived. So something about switching chords. First... Typically when you strum a guitar, you're strumming from the up down, right? You know, or, or even a power chord. I'm going from up to down. So you're striking the top thicker strings and going down. Now it doesn't mean you're not doing up strums as well. But typically when you're like a beginner strumming chords, switches typically are going to be on a down strum. The other thing is the shape of your hand, right? So what I like to think of is I like to, this will help you memorize the chords and also get the muscle memory going as quick as possible. Because if you know the basic, you know, six or seven basic open chords, you can play millions of your favorite songs. And it's just a great starting point. Um, so first, let me talk about like, you know, the easiest chord and then we'll, we'll go up from there. I think E minor is probably the best chord to learn on. And so you've got the second fret on the A string and the second fret on the D string. 
and you strum the chord, all right? So here's something though that will, that will help with any of the open chords. First, you wanna think of like one finger as the like locator point or the anchor for the rest of the chord. And I think it should be whatever finger is first in this direction, you know, the thicker strings down. Because if I play a C chord and I use my ring finger as the target on that third fret A string, it gives me, if one, it puts my hand into the proper position already. And two, it gives my other fingers a split second because I'm still strumming down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the basic open chords, and then we're gonna talk about each like anchor point for each chord. Now, yes, eventually you wanna be able to just strum them and form the chord in one move, right? Like. but everyone starts as a beginner and has to go through the repetition to get there. So the first thing is, for instance, so E minor, I would think of as my index finger on the second fret of the A string. So instead of trying to memorize a whole chord, you can start by putting your index on that second fret and then form the shape around it like that. Um, let's talk about the A major because it's also the index finger and it's, but it's gonna be now the second fret of the D string. And then you look at that as your locator and then form the shape. And those are the two like easier chords that I like to start with or even. Okay, I got a question from Instagram from Vaughn Lean Joe or Lean Ho, I'm not sure, but Vaughn says, how do I pick the strings better? Um, well, depends on what you mean by better, but um, if you're having problems with your strumming and strumming cleanly, you might wanna try a thinner pick, a flimsier, thinner pick will be a little more forgiving. And then as you get a little more confident, you can move up to like, like I, I started, I would recommend if you're a beginner starting on a light pick, and then as you get a little bit more comfortable and confident, switch to a medium and then see from there what styles you're getting into. So if you are just tuning in right now, we're talking about, uh, you know, basics, back to basics. And I'm talking about switching the basic chords and the best way to do it. One of the questions I get all the time as a guitar teacher is, oh, I can't switch the chords fast enough. And, you know, and, and it's definitely one of those first hurdles. So what I'd said so far <clears throat> is start with the E minor and A major. Those are great starting points. And also whatever finger is highest up here is your anchor point. And it gets really important with the C chord, I've noticed. Um, a lot of people learn C, they look in a book or they see a diagram and they do it with the index finger on that first fret B string, then the middle finger, then the ring finger. And also if you missed anything, this will be archived back. Go back and watch this anytime you want on any of the Gibson um, uh, social media and YouTube and all that. So you can always go back later and watch this. Um, but the C chord is definitely one of those trickier chords. Now, a lot of people start with their index finger on the first fret of the B and Look at my hand, where can it go? Everywhere, it can go anywhere and still play that. So with the C chord, you wanna think of the ring finger. There it is again, the glorious ring finger. Um, there it is. And think of that first for the C chord on the third fret of the A string. Because what happens is if you do that, if you think of the ring finger, you can look at my hand, like it's forcing my hand into the shape of a C chord. So these are these little transitional things to think about to eventually start playing them smoother because eventually you want to be able to go C chord. But when you're a beginner, it doesn't work that way. You got to kind of work it out first. Even like you can stick your tongue out of the side. It tends to help. Like, oh. like that. So oh, I sounded like uh, our friend Rick Beato there, like that. 
the C chord, like that. Shout out to Rick Beato. Amazing content. Okay, so ring finger is how you would locate that. So let me go through them now. E minor, index finger on the second fret A string. A major chord, same thing, just scoot it over. So index finger on the second fret of the D. The D major chord, index finger again on the second fret now of the G. So that's you think of that as your anchor for the D chord and then form the rest of the shape. And I talked about the C chord, ring finger. Can you tell I like doing that? Because it's not supposed to be offensive at all, is it, Brian? No. no okay. No. So it's just a, it's a short, stubby old little ring finger. But uh, <laughs> but it can still play guitar. You know, maybe not bass as well, but but they're they're long enough for guitar. So uh, <laughs> ring finger, third fret A string for the C chord, like that. And then for the G chord, there's different ways to play, but I would think of the middle finger, the one in the middle there, on the third fret of the E string, and then forming the shape, okay? Now, Alex from Instagram is saying, how can I play bar chords easier? It hurts so bad. Um, well, what's really awesome is, uh, I think it was about four weeks ago on the Gibson uh, YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, one of these back to basic series was on bar chords. And I gave as many tips that I've seen as a guitar teacher help people and also stuff I've learned from, from other guitar teachers uh, like my friend Justin Sanderco. So um, go check that out. There's some really good stuff there. Um, also, zero pressure, but I have a free bar chord course at martymusic.com. Um, you know, no, like I said, no pressure, but I have a free course on, you know, all the tips and stuff. So you have lots of choices. But anyway, this video is about switching chords easier. And I was talking about little anchor points, thinking of anchor points, right? So we went through C, A, G, um, you know, E minor we did, but E major, you would think of your middle finger on the second fret, form the shape. So one other uh, helpful tip to add to, you've got the finger as an anchor point. And then the other tip, that I really like a lot, and I do a goofy little thing um, that someone reminded me of <laughs> recently, is, and this, I got this from a guitar teacher. You know, I've taken lots of guitar lessons in my life, um, and one of my guitar teachers in college showed me this little thing for chords, muscle memory. Um, like a C major chord, I feel like, is a little trickier than E minor. So we'll talk about C. You take that C chord, Remember, we used a anchor point ring finger on that third fret. That was one thing. But the other thing, and this would help with bar chords as well, to my friend, um, my friend Alex from Instagram asking about bar chords. Uh, okay, and this is it. This will work with any chord shape. Take a chord and... I, this is the joke part. I'd say put some free spray on it. And this goes back to when I, I actually taught elementary school music uh, for three years before uh, before I had a second kind of life on YouTube. But I would talk to the students about free spray. And I make a spray sound like that. And what I'm all I'm saying is just imagine that you freeze your hand in the shape and then take your hand off. And this will work with advanced chords all the way to the most basic beginner chord and try and keep the shape with your hand because it was frozen, right? And then uh, put the put your hand back like so, boom, and then make any little adjustments you need to make and then play the chord again and hear like what the, uh, if you screwed anything up. And so I would do that with the D chord Keep the shape, put it back on, and play like so, and repeat the process. Um, so we've talked about, and by the way, this is about switching chords smoother, faster, um, getting that, getting be, to be able to switch them uh, as fast as possible so you can play lots of fun songs. Um, I talked about anchor points for the basic chords, and then I also talked about keeping the chord shape, taking the hand off, 
and putting it back on. And you just want to repeat that, but start with E major. I'm sorry, start with E minor and A major, then maybe go to G major, D major, um, you know, then C major after that. All right, I got a few more questions here. Um, oh yeah, so this is Debbie from Facebook. How you doing? Uh, thanks for watching, by the way. Uh, Debbie from Facebook says, I'm having trouble with my finger placement of the D slash F chord. Any tips? And I'm pretty sure she's referring to the D over F sharp chord, which is a real classic chord. You get it a lot um, like G, D over F sharp to like C major or to E minor. There's a lot of different ways to play it. I am not much of a thumber. You know, um, Hendrix and John Fushanti and John Mayer, they got these long ass fingers, like that long or long type fingers. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> but they got these long fingers and they can wrap their thumb around and hit these bass notes. Um, I don't do that as much, but the D over F sharp, I definitely do it that way. And so that would be thinking of it as a D chord. Nice, clean D chord. Just trying to get your thumb around that second fret E string. There's a really cool chord movement in uh, Van Halen, Panama, and I'm not obviously I'm not going to play the song, but in that bridge, there's a little thing um, where they use that D over F sharp really well. I normally think of that chord in like more folk style progressions. Um, another way to play it. Would be like that where you take your pointy finger and you put that on the F sharp note, which is the second fret of the E string. And I don't even worry about the high E string. So I just play that middle finger on the second fret of the G and then ring fingers grabbing that third fret B. Sometimes, you know. But just like any chord or scale or lick or song, you have to, it's just repetition. And I always try and emphasize that like, oh, like for instance, uh, Debbie, you're like, oh, I'm playing this D over F sharp. Why? Why is it so hard? And what you got to do is you got to play it where it sounds kind of bad first to get it to be better. So don't avoid it. Play it where it's not sounding great. Force yourself through it. And that's how you clean it up is by not avoiding it, tackling it head on. All right. So we're talking to, we were talking about switching uh, chords, uh, the basic chords. And if you're like, you know, missed the first 10 minutes or you're just coming in right now, the whole video will be archived on Instagram as well as Facebook and YouTube. So you can always go back, go through my tips. I'm also taking your questions, you guys. So if you do have uh, things that you're uh, wondering about, uh, we've got Gibson here uh, checking out the comments. And I also have my buddy Brian here who helps me with my, with, uh, some of my live streams. Uh, Brian, how are you? I'm good. Um, we, we don't have any fancy mics, so you, so people are gonna hear you. Uh, Brian is kind of like uh, the the my mysterious guest. <laughs> Mystery. Mystery's good, like just the voice, you know, just the voice. What's going on over there? You see any uh, important questions or yeah. things? You know, uh, obviously, no surprise, that guitar brings a lot of ACDC shout outs. Mm. Uh, rightfully so. Good, good. I, yeah, you know what? You guys, you're right. I want to say again, huge shout out to Gibson. This is actually a brand new SG that I just got, and it's the 61 standard uh, stop bar. Stop bar. Now, uh, one of my other guitar teachers, I haven't done this yet because I just got this guitar and it was all strung up and so, so, so gosh darn purdy. Um, I didn't restring it. And it's just sounding phenomenal. But um, my my old college guitar teacher recommended actually 
putting the strings over the top of the saddle and the locking and the balls ends of the strings on this side. Um, I'll get into that at a, a later time, but yes, this is the 61 standard. Um, uh, Simon from Instagram, what's the best way to train your pinky? What's up, Simon? Uh, best way to train your pinky. Well, you know, like guys like Slash, like barely use their pinky. Eric Clapton barely used his pinky. And then you have like Van Halen used his pinky all the time. And uh, John Mayer uses his pinky all the time. But, but you, you know, even uh, I don't even think Angus uses his pinky that much. So all I'm saying is, you know, develop your own playing and it hasn't stopped some of the greatest guitar players of all time not using their pinky their left pinky as him uh, at all i use it and once again one thing that'll help and this is the same thing with bar chords is if your fingers are more parallel to the frets as opposed to like this and you can kind of achieve that by taking your elbow and moving it towards your rib cage and when your hands in that position your pinky doesn't have as much of a distance to go to hit a fret. So that's my tip. Um, uh, I'm just going through some of these questions here. Uh, Dave from Facebook says, how do I switch from playing rhythm to lead and back to rhythm and make it sound seamless? Um, that's a real, I mean, that's a awesome, awesome topic. There's lots of little devices that you can add that are based off of chord shapes. Um, and by the way, you guys, this, this video was about switching, um, you know, all the basic guitar chord shapes, um, whether you're wanting to teach guitar or you're a beginner. Um, and I gave them all, so you can always go back and watch those. Um, I gave some of my best tips already cause we're, you know, pretty far into the video. So now I'm answering some questions, but the back to basics, switching chords, I talked about a bunch of tips, feel free to go back. It'll always be there for you to watch later. Um, switching, switching between rhythm and lead is like a lifetime journey. But one basic concept is that I like a lot, and I think you will as well. There's a G bar chord, right? The root's on the E string. I could play a C major chord. Root's on the A string. Any major chord with the A root or E root has this little box run off of it. So if I play a G major chord right here, the root's right there, third fret, you can go three, five, slide to seven. And then you have this three note box here, or I mean three string box, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, and it's off the root. So right away you can play a chord and have a little a little extension of notes off of it. But and I was a little sloppy there, forgive me. But I'm I'm, I'm I'm guitar teacher. I'm thinking about this. If I played a C major chord, that exact same everything device is off of that chord as well. So you will get stuff like. Any of, I could play any A root or E root major chord and play that off of it in any key. Now, not only is that a Hendrix thing, that's I always go back to Hendrix because it's like you go back to the source of, of what's inspired other guitar players. But, you know, you hear like a John Mayer. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
It's all right. Someone was calling me. How dare they call me right now? Don't they know I'm live streaming? Um, Brian, how was that? Good. Okay. So that's a little uh, box and you can find, you know, videos on my channel that would say stuff like uh, Jimi Hendrix embellishing, you know, stuff like that. The cage system. It's related to that kind of stuff. And you want your thumb where? Right behind the fingers? Oh, when I was playing that? No, a lot of people say their thumb slips up. Okay. Well, the ideal, like, proper guitar technique, that elbow near your rib cage to make your fingers parallel to the frets, and then you can see... Think of it like a clamp. Yeah, it's, like, right in the middle there. If your thumb slips you're up. Not, you're not really choking it. The only time it looks like... I'm like choking up with my thumb is when I've got that bass note, like that kind of thing. Or when I'm playing an A power chord, I'm muting the E string with, with my thumb. I mean, you kind of want it in the center of the back of the neck and, and some, uh, slack or, or uh, you know, you're not grabbing it so tight. There's a, yeah. there's a, a gap. Yeah. A gap. I think a lot of beginners have a tendency to have their elbow swing out and the thumb mm -hmm. swing up. Yep. Yep. And, and their hands are like that a lot. Whereas doing that, get your hand in this position. You know. <laughs> So depending on what you're doing, you're bending or you're playing a chord, your your hands, your fingers do have to line up in different ways. So you're not always just going to have your thumb in one exact spot. So uh, Mark from Facebook, I've been playing guitar for a year. That he, uh, He's been playing a guitar for about a year on a guitar he bought at a yard sale. Any ideas for what guitar I should upgrade to? Um, yeah, man, it's time. It's time. And you really, I mean, you, uh, it depends if you're, if you're getting into acoustic, um, I had played a few weeks ago in, in one of these strings, the, the Gibson G 45. Um, it's down in my other room, but I've got the, uh, J 45 right there, which is a just as good of an acoustic guitar as it gets the g45 is is gives you a little more leeway on your budget but you still get that beautiful you know gibson acoustic sound um if you're more of a rocker on electric and let's say you're going from yard sale guitar and you only want to because you know budget and style of music is so important and i'm you know not sitting here with you uh in person but if you want to get into electric guitar and you're just going from yard sale to the next level up and you want to play electric guitar, you can get an Epiphone um, Les Paul. You can get an Epiphone style SG. Um, Epiphone is the entry, that great entry level point. Um, and they're Gibson. It's a Gibson guitar. You know, it's made by Gibson, the company. So you can get this beautiful SG style guitar um, Epiphone. So look look for that um they have all the class you know you can get a sunburst les paul you know with the with all that you know kill you know all the killer trim and everything or you can go with like a like a les paul studio junior style which is like a little more simplified version um which is really cool for rocking rocking out as well so definitely look for an epic i mean if you're into electric and you're just wanting to go to that next phase up um i mean you gotta get an Epiphone. Now, if you're ready to like make that lifetime commitment and lifetime purchase, uh, look at look at it, look at it shining in the light. It gets none more beautiful than that right there. In fact, listen to the sustain. Sorry, I you know the English accent's bad, but I've talked to a lot of people from the UK. And they promised me they weren't offended. So I, I made sure. Listen to that sustain. And I'm not cranked up very loud because it's just the 
the uh, mic from my laptop, so I don't want to blow it out. Okay, Eric from Facebook says, I'm having problems with my fingers muting, making strings buzz while playing chords. Any help? Well, one, I mean, one tip right off the top of my noggin in the hat there uh, is really trying to think of the notes uh, with the tip, very tip of your finger, okay? So, like, if you're playing, like, you know, a C chord, you want, you want to think of it as the very tip of that finger not the pad the very tip with your fingers arched for maximum pressure all right so uh but just you got to keep doing it don't avoid it attack it daryl from facebook says does the sg have a smaller neck than the les paul well it depends because there's a uh, the 50 style neck and the 60 style neck, the 60 style neck is a little bit, I think what they call tapered. So it's a little bit thinner. This one right here, since, since it's a 61, has that 60 style neck. So it, this one is a little thinner this way. So, man, email. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my Amazon got delivered. Uh, <laughs> um so yeah, but it's not necessarily every SG has a thinner neck. I don't, I don't believe than a Les Paul. And you're you're looking for that that I believe you know um, uh, tapered neck is means smaller neck. Also, if you see fifty style neck, that tends to be a little bit thicker. And there's lots of guitar players can't play on the the smaller neck, and some other guitar players prefer the smaller neck. So you got to really test it out. Um, but if you know that you don't want the 50s bigger neck, then you just want to make sure it's that 60s neck. So this one is a 61. Yeah, so 60s style is a slim taper neck is what it's called. So I feel less thickness on the back, you know, or like that, this part. It's it's thinner. So if you're in, if you like that feel then you want to go for a 60s neck. I've seen uh, some amazing guitar players, absolutely amazing, who prefer the 50s neck and they just like the feel of it. So it really gets down to your personal preference. I I like both. Um, there is something about the 50s neck when you on a Les Paul, when you play a power chord and the like the power of like the bigger neck, you can like feel the, the power of a power chord, it sounds weird, but it's like, it feels bigger because it's vibrating in your hand. You know, I feel, I feel the vibration in my left hand there, right? So I think there, maybe it's just an illusion, but with that thicker neck, I feel more vibration because it's taking up more surface area of my hand. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, I'm going to end with a little jam here. Uh, once again, you guys, Marty Schwartz here, and this was a back to basics series. We've done them all month. Um, so you can go back. We talked about bar chords. I talked about the pentatonic scale. Um, this video was talking about switching easy chords, uh, better, more efficiently. Um, so they're all archived. You can always go back and check those, those videos. I also want to thank Gibson so much for inviting me on, uh, to do this. I, I, I say it every time, but it is really, really true. You know, eighth grade, I would come home from, from school and turn on MTV and there'd be all, I'd watch the MTV countdown and they were all playing Gibson's, you know, um, especially Guns N' Roses, who, you know, I, I remember like for months, Paradise City was the number one video for months, number one, and still at number one, Paradise City. And I just used to watch Slash, you know, just shredding on his Gibson and thinking like, oh my God, that's so amazing. So to be working with, with Gibson on stuff like this, it's really a dream come true. So just want to thank them so much for uh, letting me be a part of this. Uh, thank Brian as well. Also, thanks for this amazing 61 uh, SG standard stop bar. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to just jam out. How about that? And thank you again, you guys. I really appreciate your support so much. Um, did a lot of talking, so I'm going to 
a drink from my uh, shells and shells of Hawaii mug here. Ah, yes. All right. Well, anyway, once again, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go back to that kind of uh, thing I was talking about with the soloing and chords at the same time. And I was just digging that kind of vibe for a minute there. So let's see what I can do with that. Uh,
Thanks again, you guys. We'll hope to see you real soon. Shout out to Gibson. Thank you so much for having me. We'll see you guys real soon. Y'all take care. Rock on. Rock off. Rock on.